Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna take a look at Random Forest via a quick overview of uh, some of the key concepts around Random Forest and uh, why you should use Random Forest and uh, what are the gotchas if you will when you're using Random Forest and then we'll finally wrap up with a quick demo um, using the Random Forest library. Uh, so to get started with, um, so what is a Random Forest? Uh, well, random forest is um, is uh, an algorithm that basically is intended to do either classification or regression. Um, it utilizes decision trees internally. Um, this video will not be covering details of uh, decision trees. So, if uh, if you haven't already watched one of my previous videos on decision trees, I I would encourage you to take a look at that. Um, I've uh, referenced the URL of the previous video. Um, under the description of this video in YouTube if you want to have a look at. Um, so again, random forest basically is uh, what's referred to as an ensemble uh, type of machine learning. Uh, the idea of an ensemble, is it basically uses multiple other learning algorithms which can potentially be weaker uh, but actually uses these weak algorithms and combines them with one or more other types of algorithms to provide a uh, superior algorithm than what the base algorithm provides. So that's basically what's referred to as an ensemble. So random forest is just one example. Uh, it uses uh, some of the techniques like bagging which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, similar algorithms uh, exist like uh, gradient boost machines um, and various others which I hope to cover in a future video. Um, so that's what random forest really about. Uh, we'll talk about how it operates internally, but um, even before we get to the how bit, um, you, let's understand why you would use random forest to begin with. So as I mentioned early on, it uh, uses uh, techniques like ensemble. So it basically is superior in many many ways than a uh, simple decision tree. Uh, but apart from that, the reasons a lot of organizations and um, you know projects typically use uh, random forest is uh, it, to begin with, it's one of the more simpler algorithms, and uh, it's it's really quite elegant in in the sense um, it just by an ensemble of uh, different decision trees, how you can get uh, superior results. So it's it's quick, uh, it's fast to implement. Uh, there are a few parameters, particularly the number of trees that you uh, set as a parameter, which influences performance. But we'll talk more about that when we go through the demo. Uh, what's really good about uh, random forest is um, that it typically overcomes that problem with overfitting. Uh, so the idea of overfitting is that if um, your uh, your training data set is um, is very limited or if it's not a good representation of uh, the real world data, um, your model will be overfitted to what you have trained it with, and um, uh, the performance in real world scenarios could potentially be poor. Now, uh, depending on the algorithm you use, uh, typically, like even uh, you know, simpler algorithms like decision tree, uh, you find that uh, what works great in a, a you know pre-production environment or within your internal testing seems to work very poorly with, when it comes to uh, a real-life data, and that's because of the problem of overfitting. And um, random forest basically overcomes this through uh, techniques like bagging and random selection, which we'll talk about next. But it's really uh, proven itself as a good algorithm, uh, uh, you know, to overcome overfitting. And uh, finally, uh, random forests uh, have been found to be uh, quite effective when it comes to the kind of uh, uh, the data that uh, you have in terms of features. In some cases. Um, you know, uh, you could have sparse data or even missing data, and um, many algorithms they they don't perform really well. Uh, however, random forest uh, through the nature of how it selects these uh, r rows and uh, features, it basically overcomes a lot of the limitations of working with sparse data. So overall, these are some of the reasons why you need to consider using random forest. Um, now, looking at the how bit, um, so essentially we've um, uh, what we have within uh, random forest uh, a couple of techniques so one what's called as a uh, tree bagging and I'll use some uh, visualizations in a bit to help us understand 
um, you know, how it's working internally, but it uses a, a couple of techniques. So one, what's called as tree bagging. Um, so essentially, the idea is that um, within the data set, it uses um, a number of random sampling of the observations itself and uh, these observations are uh, you know randomly selected with replacement so that basically means that you could have an overlap if you will uh, for multiple uh, samples having the same uh, records or observations uh, the other thing it does is it uh, takes a subset of um, random uh, you know selection of features so even the features or the columns if you will of your observations are not always going to be uniform and uh, that's a, that can be a good thing um, because uh, uh, again this is one of the main reasons why it uh, overcomes uh, as I mentioned early on uh, problems with overfitting of the data and then finally uh, it uses what's called as voting so voting allows um, uh, as the uh, name suggests uh, different decision trees are uh, created and uh, it, there's a mechanism of voting to arrive at the final outcome. So just to give you an idea in terms of uh, kind of like a, a, a visual way of thinking about it. So imagine if uh, this was your data set, um, your entire data set. And let's just say, for example, um, it's, um, we'll walk through some of these three uh, concepts. Like say, for example, tree bagging um, and uh, the random selection of subsets. So let's just say, for example, you taken a few uh, random samples here so let's just say for example uh, your first sample here um, takes this first couple of uh, um, you know observations by the way it does not have to be continuous it's really really random uh, so this selection doesn't necessarily mean it corresponds to three four these first four to five uh, observations here uh, so um, that's uh, that's random sampling uh, so it takes um, uh, different uh, data sets uh, or, uh, I'm sorry the uh, the bagging so the other concept really is about uh, the subset or random selection of the features itself so say for example you have a few of these selections so let's just say um, we'll use four as an example so here's the other random selection and let's just say for example here's another selection and uh, here's another selection and similarly we'll have uh, lots of r random sampling as you can see, it's not just a random um, selection of the observations, it's also a random selection across features as well. And again, even features, it's not going to be continuous uh, you know, set of features, it uh, could be random uh, sampling of features as well. So one of the outcomes of that is that you're going to have overlaps. As you can see here, there's uh, quite a bit of overlaps and of course, uh, you know, it can be much more granular and there's a huge dependency on having or, or providing the right number of trees within your random forest that dictates um, you know the number of random selection so now now that's one of the concepts or, or two of the concepts that we have covered that's uh, the tree bagging concept and the random um, selection of uh, the features itself so now that we've uh, let's just say for example we have created a, a you know random selection across four uh, trees uh, so let's say for example uh, you have the first tree and, and I've not labeled it uh, with uh, any particular uh, nodes and leaves, but uh, imagine if you will that uh, the data that you're working with was say for example the weather data and um, the first decision tree uh, predicted that it's going to rain. Um, the second decision tree uh, predicted that it's going to rain as well. Uh, the third decision tree predicted that it's uh, not going to rain. Uh, and the fourth decision tree uh, predicts that yep it's going to rain uh, so that's a case of uh, three out of uh, four decision trees predicted that it's going to rain so it uses that voting mechanism that we talked about and uh, uh, basically um, arrives at uh, the conclusion that it is going to rain so that's basically uh, the concepts associated with um, uh, using random forest so behind the scene in summary it uses uh, decision trees but it uses uh, random sampling and the concept of bagging and voting uh, to basically arrive at um, you know a much more superior output than what you typically get with just using a decision tree alone so that's the concept of uh, random forest uh, in principle uh, so let's actually uh, get into our code and uh, take a look at how we can use the random forest library for classification problem. Alright, so um, I've 
uh, pre-written the code here pretty much uh, you know copy paste from some of my uh, previous examples so I'm using the same um, data set the iris data set so um, you need to uh, include the library uh, the random forest library and then we are going to um, take a sample of the data so um, we we've got the iris data set so i've split that into um, you know it's got 150 observations so split 100 into the training data and the remaining 50 uh, into the test data um, simple command to create a random forest so let's actually run these uh, so a uh, simple command to run random forest basically uh, we want to um, um, use it again uh, to classify uh, the flowers against the species column so if you've not uh, seen the iris uh, data set um, so this is just a, a very simple data set to work with so we would like to uh, use the random forest to predict uh, the species based on uh, the other features the other four features uh, so simple command again to um, uh, create the random forest um, there are quite many other uh, parameters that um, uh, you can provide um, a key one would be the number of trees that um, you want to use uh, the default is 500 trees so since I've not specified um, the number of trees it's going to use 500 as a default now um, there are various schools of thought into how uh, you need to provide um, the parameter uh, so in general the more the better um, as we discuss some of the concepts behind uh, the bagging um, and the random selection of um, uh, the features itself depends on the number of trees that you use so if you only have uh, very very few trees it's um, it's not going to be um, you know uh, very predictive or, or good in predicting or classifying uh, so you definitely want to have more number of trees um, but if you did add more number of trees uh, it also um, uh, increases the amount of processing time required for the algorithm so it's a it's a it's basically a trade-off uh, so in general uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's it really needs to be based on um, parameters like the number of uh, observations that you have the number of uh, non correlated uh, I, you know features that you have will be used to determine the number of trees that you're going to use so uh, in this particular instance we are working with a very small data set so I'll just leave the default as 100 uh, so it's now created the model so we can have a quick look um, so you can see that uh, yep it's uh, used 500 um, the default we can see that uh, in our uh, training data there's already a couple of um, errors so it's uh, predicted uh, two of the flowers um, uh, species incorrectly uh, we can now uh, now that we have created this uh, this model uh, we can use that to uh, predict for the remaining um, 50 uh, observations that we have here so we have created a prediction and we can actually see uh, the output of that um, and again there's uh, some um, uh, errors or incorrect uh, predictions that you can see here uh, we'll cover more of this when we um, in a follow-up video when I'm gonna be comparing random forests uh, with uh, decision trees um, just to give you an idea in terms of how how they perform against each other but um, as with most machine learning algorithms um, seldom ever do you get 100% accuracy or you can use other ensemble techniques uh, uh, to actually um, you know get better uh, accuracy of your data um, just a quick idea in terms of how uh, how it performs so here we can see that we've um, it's got a 94% accuracy uh, what's also very helpful uh, with the random forest uh, implementation is that it actually gives you uh, an idea in terms of uh, the importance of a certain uh, feature uh, within the overall performance. So here we can see that um, the, the petal length uh, was the most important. So um, the higher the value, the more um, important uh, it is. Um, and this is uh, really useful even if you're not using random forests uh, in an actual uh, classification problem um, utilizing random forests is quite helpful uh, to give you an idea in terms of feature selection that you may want to utilize uh, to optimize other algorithms so that's another reason to consider random forests. 
Um, and then finally, if you're interested in um, you know understanding um, how an individual uh, decision tree performs uh, within the overall random forest, uh, you can use the get tree function. So the get tree um, uses um, uh, uh, the the model that you provide as a parameter. Uh, the tree number, the number that's uh, uh, within the total number of uh, trees, so you may recall we had 500 trees um, and it, it gives you an idea in terms of um, you know how an individual tree uh, performs within that, so um, since we have 500 we can run it for a few of these um, so as you can see it's um, just by providing the index number of the tree it gives you the output for that tree um, you know, it's it's really going to be time consuming to go through every single tree, but um, uh, you can use other algorithms to, um, or, or, or simple aggregation to give you a sense of how it's performed because it's uh, returning a data frame. So that's it for this particular video. So uh, to in total, we have um, we have gone through a few concepts uh, around uh, random forests. Um, Try to understand what random forest is um, in principle. Uh, some of the key concepts uh, pertaining to how random forests actually work under the hood and we have taken a look at a demo using uh, the random forest library for classification. Uh, in future videos I hope to uh, compare random forest with uh, various other popular algorithms like uh, GBM and even compare random forest directly with uh, decision trees. So I uh, hope to see you on the next videos. Thanks everyone for watching.